Good job. Welcome, guys. <laughs> My name is Tiffany of Tiffany Warren Cosplay, and I am a full-time costume and prop fabricator, as well as educator on YouTube. So there are tons of tutorials up there. So we've got other questions on making costumes, making an Akoski robe. 3D printing, other painting stuff, go to YouTube on my channel, you'll find a lot of stuff. So this panel is going to be airbrush painting cosplays for beginners, and I'm really going to go over a lot of like where to get it, what tools to start off with, what expensive tools to save for later so you do not destroy them, and things like that. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, has anybody airbrush painted before? Yeah, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Airbrush painting versus normal painting. Why, why go from hand painting to airbrush painting? You get a much better result, cleaner results. You don't have brush strokes then. And you can mix colors a lot easier, in my opinion, with airbrush painting. As well as you can get really nice gradients. So like colors like this, going from a yellow all the way to a deep crimson red. And then same of like a brown to a turquoise to a blue. You get really nice vivid colors depending on the type of airbrush paint that you use. And it's my favorite thing. I just love airbrush painting and you can do it on EVA foam, warbla, leather, fabric, your wigs. So it's a really cool, like use of a tool and technique to do on these things. Safety. So you do need to wear a respirator just because you don't want to breathe in all of the paint fumes. When you are painting, your paint from the airbrush gun is going to go onto your surface. Your nice little small surface you're going to see. You're not going to realize it is leaving a dust in the air of all the paint particles. So if you're painting in a room, you're gonna have white paint on whatever surface is behind you without you even realizing it. And so with that, I always say paint outside or paint in your garage. Airbrush paints, you want it to be on your surface. You want it to be not ruining other costumes and you want to also be safe while using it. So for me, like I said, I'm in the garage, Texas heat, yeah, kind of bad, but paint early, it's okay. Having your garage door open and the fans to help ventilate it out if you can, just a little shop fan. You don't have to have an expensive paint booth. You can paint on the garage floor or a cardboard box. That's how I started when I started doing airbrush painting in like, I think 2018 is when I just started doing it, fell in love with it. And that's the best option. If you are going to paint inside a room, you do need to invest in an airbrush booth with an actual vacuum to help ventilate those fumes out of the room. Also, no pets in the room. Just don't do it. <laughs> Other safety things would be for painting up close. So if I'm painting this close, you're going to want to wear safety glasses. Reason being is the air coming from the airbrush gun is going to hit the surface and bounce back into your face. And this is gonna cause your eyes to get really agitated, and especially if you're wearing contacts. So highly recommend just safety glasses. If you're painting from far away, it's typically okay, but um, definitely up close pieces, glasses. And disposable gloves if you want. I'm definitely a painter that my hands are fully rainbow. People think I have beautiful, pretty nails. No, it's just airbrush paint. They're just always covered in it. But if you don't want that, you can wear gloves. It does come off with warm water and soap. Probably not the best for it to absorb in your skin. Some of the tools that you're going to need to start airbrush painting. Of course, you're gonna be needing an airbrush gun because obviously that's your main one. And I highly recommend getting one on Amazon, specifically the Masters Airbrush Kit. And this kit is the best one for starting off. It's the one I started off. I've used quite a bit of different airbrush guns, but this one, you wanna look for the Masters Airbrush Kit. It typically comes with three different types of airbrush guns. And I recommend this because everybody likes to paint differently. You may like a different type of feed for the airbrush gun, whether the paint buckets on the top, 
the bottom, or whatever you are painting on. As well as those kits that typically come with a compressor and a compressor hose. These are normally cheap kits, like, well, not cheap, but cheaper than the expensive kits. And it's gonna cost you probably around 150 on Amazon. And I save cheap because they're not going to be super high quality and will probably only last you for the gun about a year to two years if you properly take care of it, which starting off, you're not going to. Trust me, I went through a few. And with that kit, the compressor is gonna last you a while, but the hose is most likely, especially if you're in Texas, with the heat and the humidity, is going to dry rot. In the airbrush gun, there are also rubber washers that put all the pieces together, make it all function properly. Those are gonna dry rot as well. And you can get replacement parts, but once you start airbrush painting for a long time and you figure out what you want, you'll still want to invest in a better quality one. And so I always recommend get the cheapest one you can find that's the full kit. A lot of times it'll also come with some paint so you can figure out what do you like to do with this airbrush gun and kind of figure out all how it works, really. So for storing your equipment, I have my compressor. It lives in the garage. It's in shaded area and same with the hose. I now have a upgraded version, so it lasts a lot better in Texas. But for the starter kit ones, again, those only lasted me about a year and a half. And then I had to get another one. And for your airbrush guns, you need to store them inside. And so whatever box it came in, keep that box and always keep the gun in that and bring it inside so it doesn't get ruined. The humidity, you don't want it to start having parts like rust on you and things like that. So that's the best option. You will also need to clean all of these parts. And cleaning is the biggest, biggest thing with airbrush painting. And if it's not cleaned properly, your airbrush gun is ruined. The tiny little paint comes out of a little hole that is less than a millimeter thick, or like circle of a millimeter. And so if you have any paint that slightly dries anywhere in the airbrush gun, it will clog it and it is a pain to clean it and to get rid of like all of those particles. So for cleaning an airbrush gun, you're going to need to invest in a few more products that don't come in the kit. So for this, you're going to need first to take your airbrush gun inside to clean. You're going to want to fully disassemble every single part of the airbrush gun including the very tiny, tiny little tip. It's like a gold piece like that big typically with an even smaller little tip that has a special little wrench to come and take it apart. Be very careful because that piece, if it's dropped, will crack the threading and that part is annoying to replace. You're going to need for that a cleaning pot. Typically that is a glass pot specifically for the airbrush gun. It has a glass bottom with a black top and a little vent, and it has a seat that you sit the airbrush gun onto, so when you're painting, you can leave it next to you, and so if you have to walk away with paint in it, you just sit it there. Really great. But it's used for when you put your cleaning solution in, which you're gonna have to get as well, you clean it into that pot. So all of the cleaning solution and the bad paint that you no longer want, you'll clean it into that. And then once you're done, you can just dump that water. And that is the best, best option. You're also going to want to get, and the typically the cleaning kits come with the pot. It comes with this little brush pack. And these are very important because your airbrush gun, it has a small little chamber and you gotta use these to clean inside each of the pieces. And then it also comes with, I'm gonna open this real quick. This thing. 
and I'll pass these around. Please do not poke yourself with this. But uh, it's a little cleaning needle, and this is to help with the small little tip and to get those dried up paint parts inside of it. So that's the best thing, um, getting that. And then of course the cleaning solution specifically for airbrush paint. All of that, get on Amazon. And all uh, that should probably cost you about $30. I forgot to mention earlier, also for the airbrush kit, typically it comes with the three different types of guns. And generally the types are going to be the uh, siphon pen, which is on the bottom, your paint bucket. I don't typically like those because they have, for the paint coming through, a little needle, like a straw that goes down. The straw doesn't go down to the very bottom. It has like a slight cut curve. So you always have to have like that much paint at the bottom. So if you're doing more fine stuff, you're going to want one that has the cup at the top. And those are the gravity fed ones. And that is my favorite type. There are a bunch of different type of gravity feds. So normally there's like a U shaped one. There's like a V shaped one that comes in the kits. Uh, sometimes there's one on the sides, but not typically for the starter kit ones. Those kind of go through them. I'll also say, in case you are wondering, the gun that I use now is the Iwata Eclipse. It's a $300 gun. That's why I say invest in the starter kit that gives you everything so you can learn how to do it. Learn your mistakes on that for $150 once you start to figure out which airbrush gun you want, because there are a bunch of other ones that go up into the $4,000 range. You can figure out later on what to invest in if you want but buy the cheaper ones, that way you can turn on those. For airbrush paint, so there's a bunch of different types and the ones that come in the kits are cheap, but they'll do the job, it'll be fine. There's the three brands that I have personally worked with are the Model Air, which is a water base. Typically a pack of 16 is gonna cost you about $40. Uh, they're, a lot of times they'll come with a kit, but they're muddy and they don't give you vibrant colors, but you can still paint with them. You can still get really pretty results with them. Another one you can do is the U.S. Art Supply Airbrush Colors. Again, it's another water base and a pack of 24 is going to cost you about $60. All of those are really shiny, really car plastic shiny when they dry and so if that's the look you want maybe go to those again they're they're cheaper than some of the other ones but the paint that i use and i will say i am sponsored by them but i'm not sponsored to say anything nice about them whatsoever i love their paint it is cretex colors specifically their wicked color line and they are a little bit more pricey but they're going to give you vibrant colors they're gonna give you metallics, neons, uh, the Aquaman movie. So all of the, the armor that was iridescent and it changed in the light, that's all that paint brand too, is Createx colors. So they're really great, but a pack of 22 is gonna cost you about 100. And those are for like the small paints. So a little bit of a price increase, but you can still do all of the cheaper ones. They work just as fine. And then later on, invest in some of the others. And I'll be passing out some of uh, my samples that I keep around for airbrush painting so you can see. Yeah, I highly recommend also for painting, doing samples so you can learn a lot. They're so great. <laughs> So for airbrush painting, also another thing you're going to need in, to invest in is a airbrush slow improver or an airbrush thinner. And so with your paint, just like spray paint, there's a bead in your paint. You're going to have to mix it and shake it and have it where you hear that bead because the paint, especially in Texas, sitting in your garage, is going to kind of settle down and you got to mix it properly. And for that, after mixing it, sometimes it's still a little bit thick. So you'll wanna use different products to help with that. Also different products to help with the weather. And so your airbrush flow improver, that is what I use typically for 
everything, especially here in Texas. And basically, it is to help the drying, um, help it from drying out as fast. So your paint in the paint bucket, it's still gonna start drying. In the tube that the paint goes down with the needle, it's still gonna start drying over time, especially if you're doing a small little, little bit. So you can control with an airbrush gun how much paint comes out of it, depending on the gun. Typically, you can go from that to that size with one gun. And you just push the trigger, depending on how far back you pull the trigger, will depend on how wide the spread is. If the spread is very small, the paint is more likely going to dry into the uh, part with the needle. So that's what the Airbrush Flow Improver is going to do. It's going to cost about $10. You can also use a thinner. It thins your paint. It's another $10. Honestly, I don't really use that. Uh, with Createx colors, but if you're going to be using a different type of airbrush paint, you will want to see with that specific paint if they have any recommendations. For Createx, I just airbrush fill improver. It's wonderful. All right, so moving on with airbrush painting. Airbrush painting is all about painting in layers and starting with a base coat. So if your base coat is white, it's going to look different with a red on top of it versus if your base coat is with a black. And I'll show you, so both of these stacks here, which I'll show you, are the same exact colors, but with different base coats. And these are my samples I keep with me every time I airbrush paint, so I can simply look like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do this base coat to get this one. But let's see, I'll do a really noticeable one. Same color. One with the black coat as the base and one with the white. Like this. And I'll pass these together so you can see them. But um, that's a really big thing with airbrush painting. And with metallics, same thing. If you use a white base coat, which wherever it went, they're the same colors were next to them versus if it had a white or a black base. And if you want a lighter aluminum color, you can do a white base, which is what I did on this versus instead of a black one where the color would be a lot darker as the base. And with airbrush painting, you do it in light coats and you don't have to apply it super thick. It comes out pretty easily with the airbrush gun and it's a lot thinner than painting by hand. Painting by hand is just in general when applying the paint is going to be a lot thicker on the surface. And if you're doing EVA foam, it's more likely going to crack and come off versus airbrush paint, it's more likely going to stay on the surface and you're more likely going to be able to bend. And if there is a crack, you can use a heat gun and lightly go over it on that surface and the crack will go away. I had that with traveling with my hammer and I just used a light heat gun onto the top and now you no longer see the crack. Worked great. Only works though with EVA foam, plastic dip, and airbrush paint. So, not hand painting. With gradients also, gradients are really fun to do and I showed it at the beginning but let's do, do you want to do the red to the yellow or the blue to the brown? Blue to the brown. Okay, blue to the brown. So for this one, I did a base coat of, I want to say it was white, just so everything popped more. And this is EVA foam with three heavy coats of Plasti Dip on top before airbrush painting. And then starting with a full base coat on the entire thing of white, for this section, I did the brown first, going upwards all the way up, and then once it dried, I made a turquoise color. For this, you want to want the main turquoise, this is really hard with the mic by the way. <laughs> so with this turquoise color, I first started off with it here, and then up close. If you move the airbrush gun farther away, the spread goes farther and it creates more of a mist. So you can do a light mist going this way, slowly over the brown section. 
not too much, but that's going to give you a slight gradient. So you don't have to do it while it's wet. Same thing with going this way. So I probably went to about here when I painted it. Once that section was dried, then I made a darker blue color. And the color is also going to be slightly mixing just visually and not mixing the paint together on the surface. So it's going to just be a visual thing. And it's a really cool technique without having to do color theory to mix your paint. But with the dark blue, I painted my dark blue here. Again, pulling the airbrush gun away from the surface, going downward to about here to give that slight mist. And that gives you the best gradient effect. Does that kind of make sense on it? Awesome. Okay. But yeah, that, that's really fun to do. Um, just about on all of my swords and props, there's some type of gradient on them. And really fun. I also recommend, so most of the starter kits, they come with a color wheel. If you don't have a color wheel in your color kit or in your airbrush kit, invest in one. Even if you have an art degree in painting, yeah, still get one. It just makes it so much easier, especially with just like mixing random colors. Mixing brown is, in my opinion, the hardest color to make because you can do it in two different directions. One is gonna be a more purpley color, one is going to be a more orangey, like ready color. And so with brown, buy that color. Don't mix it. Um, <laughs> but uh, Jesse, this one. But yeah, you can see, I think the label on it says the, the paint that it came with too, which was part of the airbrush kit. Just about all starter kits will have it. And a lot of times any starter airbrush gun will come with it as well. But they're really helpful, especially if you're tired, you're painting at midnight, and you just can't think anymore, and you want to know, okay, what colors do I mix together? So, with mixing airbrush paint, you can just do it in the bucket, like the little cup that the paint goes in. And I just typically, depending on the color I want, will do like a 50-50 mix. And then you want to leave a tiny bit of space at the top to put in your flow improver or your thinner and this is really just gonna help it all go. And then once it's in the bucket, put the lid on top. The lid has a hole on the top. It needs to always have a hole there. And you will put your finger on top and then shake it a bunch, do a test little thing on the wall or whatever cardboard box you have to make sure it's the right color, and then you can paint. But uh, with the hole on the cap, so your airbrush gun doesn't need to breathe. So if that hole dries up with paint, just use a little poker or some tweezers just to poke the paint through, take the cap off though so the dried piece doesn't go into your paint. But um, that is actually one of the problems you might have if the airbrush gun is no longer working. It's because it's not getting proper air. Uh, shading. So shading is a fun one. And there's a few different ways that I like to shade. You can do it with an airbrush gun with just small little details, trying to airbrush paint a small little line around everything. That's so annoying. I honestly don't paint that way, but it can be helpful. It just depends on what type of airbrush gun you have. If you have one that is able to do a lot finer detail, then all forth, go. But the really easy way to do it, which is how I paint all of mine, is for the shadowing. You have to work in small sections and it's going to depend also on the weather outside. So if it is hot outside, let's say 80 degrees to 120, your paint's gonna dry a lot faster. So you gotta work in smaller sections for doing this type of shading technique. But, so for our happy, our happy little flower here, sunflower, for this, for shading, I got just a kind of brown black color and heavily applied it just on this area, covering the entire painted yellow spot. With a paper towel, while it is still wet, wipe it all away. It's going to leave the black into all of the creases and you're gonna have a much easier, much faster way to get shadowing versus you trying to do a tiny little line or trying to mask off sections. So that's the way I do it. With all of the armor I'm wearing today, that was the method for doing all of the black and the shading. 
and really easy. You just kind of work in smaller sections at a time. So, oh, and don't use oil paint. Don't do it. Don't do it on any of your projects. Don't don't mix it. Don't. It it's ruined so many cosplays I've seen from people. So just avoid it. Yeah, oil paint takes forever to dry. So don't. Um, also, with painting, don't mix different types of airbrush paint brands. So if you are using a model air versus a Cretex color, even if they are the same type of water-based paint, they are going to give you different results. If you are painting uh, the whole piece with Cretex colors and you go with model air for your black paint, it's going to dry a different shine. So it's going to be more matte where this is going to be more shiny. Also, there's sealers that can help with that. But in general, mixing them, it's going to cause problems. So if you are going to paint, try to stick with one brand for that specific project. So different types of surfaces and materials you can airbrush paint on. I've already mentioned that there is ah, eating my hair. Uh, EVA foam. For this, I highly recommend to do three heavy coats of Plasti Dip before airbrush painting. If you are going to airbrush paint onto unprimed EVA foam, you're gonna get not as well results. Reason being, EVA foam is very porous and it's going to absorb all of your expensive paint and you're gonna to have to paint so many layers on top of it. So by having a primer on the surface, whether it is a Mod Podge kind of thing or Plasti Dip, do that. Also, if you are going to paint on top of unprimed foam, at least heat treat it because that's going to make all of your foam from this and it's going to close it. So it'll be a little bit less porous, but it's still not the best results. So Plasti Dip or Mod Podge kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, other materials you can paint on are doing Orbla. Warble is another one that's really easy. Same kind of principles of painting on top of. It's not gonna crack on there. With wigs, you can paint. So a lot of times for, not this wig specifically, but other ones, I'll paint the roots of them. With airbrush painting onto wigs though, the paint is not going into the wig hair. It is just on the surface. So that does mean if you brush through it, the paint will flake off. So just to be aware of that, same with using any hairspray on top of your wig if it's been airbrush painted, be cautious because it may start turning more of a white color. And then just be aware also if your, your wig is fully painted and it's really long and you're wearing a nice pretty outfit, it may rub off onto your outfit. Yeah. Other materials are leather. Leather is one of my favorite materials to airbrush paint on. It is going to be a slightly different than painting on EVA foam as your base coat, you're not going to really paint one. It's going to depend on the type of leather you have. If it, your leather is a veg tan where it's more of a light color versus if it is a black hide like that, it'll, that will be technically your base coat. And for this, you're not going to want to paint in too many layers. You want that specific color to be that. So I have lots of samples of that. And you can still do all the gradients. If your leather has a texture on the surface, the mist will show that texture. So depending on, let's say you have a, a rough skin texture on the leather, if you're spraying at an angle, all of those details are going to be like little holes almost. So just to be aware. If you have seen some of my other cosplays before, Atlantic Mercy, Pink Mercy, uh, my World of Warcraft armor, um, let's see, my Charlotte costume that I'm going to be in tomorrow. All of those are leather that has been airbrush painted. And they just are much better, in my opinion, than using leather dye. I will say my belt is leather and this was leather dye just because it's brown. But if you are trying to get vibrant purple colors and vibrant greens and stuff, Airbrush painting, in my opinion, is the best for leather and a lot less messy. You won't ruin the whole room and dye the floor. It's a whole nightmare. So a cool thing with airbrush paint also, you can still paint by hand with it. 
So you can still, with the airbrush paint, shake it up and use a paintbrush and still paint with it. So after you're done painting, and it's nice and pretty, but you want to add some fine detail and you just don't want to go in with an airbrush gun because uh, maybe you have a really shaky hand and the airbrush gun is just going to add to it, then you can just do it by hand and go around all the edges. The airbrush paint with a paintbrush is not going to go as far though. If you're doing a very, very tiny paintbrush, you're probably going to only get about that far at a time and you'll have to constantly keep putting more paint on, but it works really well. And the paint, if you are going around a circle object, will dry smooth instead. So if it does look like you're leaving paint strokes and it does look like it's starting to get thicker in one section, it'll dry smooth all the way around, which is unlike painting with acrylic paint. So it's kind of nice little detail. I will also say that it does ruin your paintbrush though. So buy cheap crappy paintbrushes, have them specifically only for airbrush painting paint. So, but yeah, I, that's my other little technique of if it's not quite dark enough, I can go around all the edges with a fine little black paintbrush. Or you can use a Sharpie too. That's another technique. Is weather. Weather really, really affects your airbrush paint. And humidity as well. And just everything in between. The best airbrush painting days for me are when it's 70 degrees and there's no humidity in this painting in my garage. For that, your paint's typically gonna dry in about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how thick of a coat you did. So it's really fast to paint with airbrush paint versus if you're painting with acrylic and you gotta wait like 30 minutes between each coat. But um, this way you can just keep layering it, keep painting other sections, really easy. If it is 70 degrees and higher, but humid, it's going to take you about five to ten minutes for it to dry. And a lot of times when I start dealing with humidity, once I'm done painting it, I bring it inside to dry because it's most likely not as humid inside, hopefully. If it is cold, 50 degrees to 70, again, it's going to still have a little bit of a longer drying time. For this, you will start to have a little bit of air issues with airbrush painting, with sometimes it not feeding properly just because it's a little bit colder. The paint likes to work when it's warmer. And it's gonna take you probably around three to 10 minutes to dry. So the drying time definitely increases. Now add humidity. It's gonna take you about 30 minutes to higher to dry. Definitely take it inside if it's like 50 to 70 in humidity. If it is below 50, all the same issues. I don't recommend painting in this, but I have. Um, I've done that in my garage and I have a heat lamp next to me because I am cold after it is 70 and you know Texas girl I'm sure there's a bunch of other people too that have that same issue your paint when it comes out when it's below 50 is going to start looking splotchy the thinners that you use it's going to start having a lot more liquidy stuff coming out of it and your paint you're going to be paint 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 just like random little watery spots coming out of it. And that tends to happen a lot more. And if you are painting below 32 degrees, don't do it. Bring all your paint inside because freezing temperatures, if it's kept outside in the garage, will ruin your paint. So the paint will then freeze and then all of your paint, your expensive paint is ruined and will never come back to life. So bring it inside. I also say with painting, masking off your layers when painting. Best thing to give you the best results. If you are plasti dipping, don't apply masking tape to your plasti dip. Apply your base coat to whatever colors you want. And then after that color is done, you're happy with, let's say, I've painted all of the blue and the brown vine section. So then I would mask it off. For masking tape, you want to get the expensive tape, Scotch brand. Don't get painter's tape. Painter's tape does not work, especially in Texas. And with the Scotch brand expensive paint tape, you will want to rip it into sections with the tape. Put it onto your leg and then put it onto the surface of your piece. The 
the reason for doing this is it's going to make the stupid adhesive that's really, really sticky a little bit less. And yeah, you can buy less adhesive sticky tape, but then it's not actually going to stick to your surface. So that has always given me the best results. I have never had an issue with doing that technique. And yeah, it's pretty good. I will say with masking off sections, so I don't really care if I have, if I'm only painting the blue and the brown section and I'm not going to paint the shaft section of the key, the yellow and the orange and the red, I'm not going to care if there's mist going onto that because once I'm done with the brown vine section and I mask it off, I'm going to do another base coat to cover all of that again. So it's going to save you a lot more masking off time, but then you'll just do another like base coat of, let's say, yellow or white, and then I'll do my gradient on top of it. And that's how I kind of did this one. That is kind of the basics, not really basics, but basics for airbrush painting. Any questions? Start painting on cardboard boxes. They're, they're cheap. If you ruin that, it's a cardboard box. <laughs> Same with nice and shiny tools. If you have a nice and pretty airbrush gun and you have a nice and pretty, let's say you invested in a pretty cardboard box or a wardrobe. Um, I actually paint in, I have trouble saying this. It is a arm wire. I'm terrible with saying that, but um, that is my airbrush booth because I have a hanger for all of the, the pieces I want to hang all of my props on. It's got little shelves that I can store all of my paint in and things like that. They're a little bit more expensive, but if you can find one, that's a really good airbrush paint um, booth. But uh, any nice shiny tool, I always like to ruin it when I first get it by, here's a black line of paint, no longer nice and pretty. I'm no longer intimidated by it. Uh, same with tools. If your airbrush gun is nice, pretty, and shiny, like even me, I'm, I'm nervous to touch it. I'll, I'll leave it in a box for like five months before, like I've taken it out, it's pretty, but I don't want to use it because I don't want to ruin it. And honestly, the best thing to do is just get some paint, put it on. If you have like a new hammer or something, go make a dent in it. So it's no longer like intimidating to you. Just practice on different materials. If you do want to paint on like foam or warbler things, have some scrap materials from a past project or even on fabric and just practice on those. Most of the things I have are just samples, like the leather that passed around. Those are all just scrap pieces that I had from cutting out my patterns. The gold diamond, so this is EVA foam and it is attached to the full breastplate. And then for this, so I started off for all of this armor. It's three coats of heavy plastic dip. And then I did a base coat for the gold with white because I wanted it to be a more vibrant gold and not a bronze kind of color. If you did a base uh, coat of black, it would have done a lot darker and bronzy. So doing the white first, wait for it to dry. And then I did, it's technically the pearl copper color. So it has a little bit of a, a shine to it. Creatrix colors, by the way, they have a wonderful metallic lines, a quick silver to give you all of this metal look. So you don't have to mix a gray. It's, it's already silver, same with gold and stuff. So doing the pearl copper, then after that, I mixed a black with the pearl copper. And then I did, I think I did a little bit of like a brown mix to it too. So it wasn't just stark black on top of it. And then put that on while it's wet with the paper towel, wiped it away so the black stayed in all of the areas. And I like to go back afterwards with a little bit of that original gold just onto where I want it to be the highlighted sections. This is gonna make it so it doesn't look as muddy and it looks more intentional for you where you did all that shadowing. have the same techniques. So with this one, if I was to airbrush paint this part, this is leather dyed, but I've done tons of other ones. So all of these darker lines are actually carved into the leather and the paint is going to go in there with airbrush painting. It's going to originally, when you paint, be the same color as the surface. But if you do the same shadowing where you apply your black and then wipe it away, it's going to leave it dark into all of those carved out spots with leather because it is a more of a, excuse me, 
more of a porous kind of skin texture, you're gonna have a little bit more a darker look to the surface. So in general, when I paint with airbrush paint, I always paint lighter because I know with how I'm gonna do my shadowing, everything's gonna get darker. So all of these colors were originally like stupid bright silver, like as bright as all of the chairs to get to this, and then adding the shadow. So for sealing it, I do, so there's two types that you can do. Um, I prefer to do Cretex Colors UVLS their line for that. It is specifically for sealing their airbrush paints and it's to protect it from all of the sun rays. And also it's it weird. just makes it all different consistencies. There is different finishes with their line. There's a matte, a satin, and a gloss. And on the foam samples I had, if you notice that it was three different kind of shines, that was actually with their specific sealers. And at the bottom, I had like a M, G, and S to say which one it was. Another option, which is what I started off with with airbrush painting and can be somewhat of a cheaper option and a much more easier option to get is the Rust-Oleum Clear Enamel Spray Paint. And it comes with, like you can get it in a matte, a satin, a semi-gloss, and a gloss. And I used that for a very long time with that product. So on, on your foam though, it is, you're not gonna really want to use a heat gun afterwards because it can slightly bubble that um, from the surface. Also, with doing this for more than 10 years, I have noticed my original props that I did that with, they're now becoming a little bit sticky and they're now starting to get a little bit of a yellow tint. So certain costumes, specifically with Warbla and doing that same type of painting technique and things, are now starting to have issues. So just things to be aware of if you want to store your cosplays for a really long time. So a lot of times that happens with, there's a few, few different things. So plastic up, same thing, humidity, drying time, all of that. Also shaking the can enough and then the weather, the temperature, if it is above 70, I leave it in the garage. If I plan on plastic dipping that day and it's below 70, I take the can inside for at least an hour so it, can, so it can become room temperature for my place, which is always in the 70s. And then when I wanna use it, I will take it to the garage. That gives you the best results. I don't recommend ever heating up plastic dip on a stove with warm water. It, it can explode, so be aware with that. And then also with EVA foam, I don't know your process with doing it, but when sanding, it has a foam and dust on the surface that you may not see. And you really need to wipe it away with a paper towel to remove all of that. Even if you are going to use a heat gun onto the surface, it is actually gonna caramelize all of that. And it's gonna seem like it's not there, but then when you come to paint, it creates all these kind of little, little bubblies and textury parts. Not the greatest. So that, wiping out the surface, if you tend to have more oily fingers, the oil residue onto your foam will also cause issues with that. So if you're seeing like the paint is all even, but then there's random little, like it, it's just a different shine there and it, that's what it is. So yeah, and the quality of your foam too. If you're buying really cheap foam, it tends to have more of those issues versus if you're using like TNT or SKS props kind of stuff. If you're just buying from like Home Depot, that foam tends to give not as good results when it comes to doing plastic dip. You can use the, the UVS sealer with the airbrush gun. I don't like to just because it is really thick and you gotta thin it out. And also because I painted my garage, I don't wanna do that in my garage. So I apply it by hand with a paintbrush and then I can just be happy in AC and do it there. And so it's a lot easier, but you can put it through the airbrush gun, just takes some more time. Sometimes it depends on the type of brush that you have. So you wanna get one that is not a thick, typical painter's brush. So like in Home Depot, the, the paint brushes they sell, don't get those, go to let's say Michael's or Hobby Lobby into the actual painting section, you wanna get a paintbrush that has more fine bristles 
and has a flat line. Um, stay away from like the watercolor kind of brushes, but you want to apply it. I'll typically use a brush about this big to that big, and it goes really far. And you want it to be evenly applied onto the surface. It does, so it is a white color typically for it. And if you're applying it by hand, evenly apply it, but you don't want it to be white and milky because if it is that color, it's going to dry white and milky. So you got to be careful if you have a bunch of little low parts, then you want to make sure that you're kind of sucking up those parts so you don't have little white milk bubbles everywhere. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for coming to the panel. I hope it helped you for getting into airbrush painting or helped with if you have any questions on airbrush painting that you've had. Feel free to come and visit me there and if you have more questions, uh, you can come ask. So thank you. Thank you.